Okay, so I think that there's a part two to the order of operations, and that's when there's more than one grouping symbol. So I'm reminding you of the rules, which is parentheses, exponent, multiplication, and division from left to right, and addition and subtraction, whichever you see from left to right. So there really are only four steps, and multiplication and division are on the same playing field. So here is one example of what I mean by multiple grouping symbols. If I had 36 divided by bracket 20 minus parentheses 4 times 2, close the parentheses, close the bracket, plus 4 to the third minus 6. So when I look at this problem, you'll notice that there are two sets of grouping symbols or two sets of parentheses. So you treat the innermost parentheses first. So when you have more than one parentheses, you must do the innermost first. So if I'm looking at the uh, parentheses, I have 20 minus 4 times 2, and in the parentheses I have 4 times 2. That is what I have to do first because I'm doing the innermost. So that will give me an 8. To tell you whether you're going to keep the parentheses or not is to look at the sign in front of the parentheses. If the sign in front of the parentheses is an addition or subtraction sign, you no longer need to keep the parentheses. If it doesn't have a, a symbol in front of it, you, uh, in other words, it's a multiplication or division, you need to keep the parentheses. So for this particular problem, because it has addition or subtraction, you'll notice that I did not need to keep the parentheses. But I do bring everything down. To continue here, then, I have to do the subtraction because, again, I have a parentheses that I'm still dealing with. So I'm going to have to do 20 minus 8. Um, on this one, again, there is, an, there is a symbol in front of it. The division symbol is in front of it, so you do not have to keep the parentheses. You can actually just do 20 minus 8, and you'll get a 12. And then you bring down all of the stuff in front of it and behind it. We're going to do one where you're going to have to keep the parentheses as our next example. When looking at this one, you're going to see that you have division, addition, and exponent, and subtraction. So according to the order of operation, we must deal with the exponent. So off to the side, I'm going to show 4 to the third. We know to keep the base and multiply it times the number of times the exponent tells you. So in this case, we're taking the base and multiplying it times itself three times. What is 4 times 4? It's a 16. And then, so that's what I got here, and then 16 times 4 will give me a 64. So I have 36 divided by 12 plus 64 minus 6. Continuing with order of operations, I have to deal with step 3, which is multiplication and division next. So I only see a division between the 36 and the 12, so I'm going to do with that. So that's going to give me a 3 plus 64 minus 6. According to the order of operations, step four tells me addition and subtraction, which means, again, from left to right, it happens to be that 3 plus 64 happens first, so 3 plus 64 is going to give me a 67. We bring down the minus 6, and then 67 minus 6 is going to give me a 61. Um, you'll notice from back in our previous examples, it kind of makes like a V shape. The next example I want to do is when we have a fraction. So if I gave you 25, plus 8 times 2 minus 3 to the third power, and I want to divide that by 2 times 3 minus 2. On this example, we have a numerator and a denominator to deal with. So in that respect, there are two grouping symbols. In other words, you have to do the numerator's expression first, then you have to do the denominator's expression second and get those two answers and then do the division in the end because a fraction or written as numerator denominator means to divide. So if I'm only looking at the numerator, I've got 25 plus 8 times 2 minus 3 to the third. According to the order of operations, there are no grouping symbols here except that we have to get the numerator answer first. So that means that we go straight into exponent. So 3 to the third power is going to be a 3 times itself, 3 times. So 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, so we know 3 to the third is 27. Then we bring down the 25 plus 8 times the 2 minus the 27. According to this, we have addition, multiplication, and subtraction. We then have step 3 that comes into play, which means we have to do the 8 times 2 
that's going to give me a 16, bring down the plus 25, or the 25 plus, and bring down the minus 27. Going from left to right, 25 plus 16 is going to be 11 carry the 1, so that's going to give you a 41 minus 27. If you're not comfortable with showing, with uh, just doing the subtraction in your head or the addition in your head, there's always the side work for you to be able to add and subtract to your borrowing and whatever you need to do. So that's going to end up giving me a 14 for my numerator. So I know that my entire numerator is 14. We still have to do our denominator, which is 2 parentheses 3 minus 2. And this is what I was talking about in the last problem. There is no symbol separating the two, in other words, an operation symbol, which is multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition. There is no operator separating the two from the parentheses. So in that case, you have to keep the parentheses because in the end, that will mean multiplication. So you have to keep that. So if I'm looking at the order of operations here, I start with the parentheses, which is 3 minus 2. That's going to give me a 1. And as I stated, since there is no operator separating the 2 from the parentheses, this tells us it's multiplication, so we must keep the parentheses. What is 2 times 1? Well, 2 times 1 is a 2. That's our denominator. Once we've got our numerator and our denominator, this is a division problem. This can be rewritten as 14 divided by 2 which is going to give me a 7, so my answer to that entire order of operation is 7.